11 miles out from the North Devon coast lies Lundy Island. Sitting in the lively waters of the Bristol Channel, it's a famously unique habitat for wildlife, as well as a shining beacon for marine conservation, the UK's first marine protected area. The word Lundy is Norse for Puffin Island and it's renowned for its puffin colony, which nests here from April to July. In fact, the island hosts many seabirds, from guillemots and razorbills to several species of gull, all travelling thousands of miles to make the most of Lundy's strategic position. Lundy's position in the fast-moving waters and mixing currents of the Bristol Channel and the vast Atlantic Ocean also provides a home for its famous population of Atlantic grey seals. The strong currents that surround Lundy ensure its rich waters are full of life and nutrition. And whilst the western side of the island weathers the brunt of the Atlantic storms, the opposite side offers shelter for the seals to use as a nursery, raising their pups in the protected coves and quiet waters of Lundy's east-facing coast. The wildlife on and around this island is absolutely breathtaking, but what makes Lundy so special actually starts underwater. I'm here to meet Dean, the warden, to find out more. Hi Dean! Hi Carl! How are you doing? Very well, sir. How are you? Good, good, thank you. Good. What a lovely day. Absolutely glorious, isn't it? Look at it. Another day in paradise. It is indeed. Yes. <laughs> so Lundy sits in a pretty unique position, doesn't it, within the Gulf Stream and the Bristol Channel? Yep, so we've got, you know, the Atlantic Ocean on the west coast and we've got the beautiful, well, estuarine-like waters of the Bristol Channel here as well. And yeah, we get that lovely Gulf Stream, those warm waters coming up from the south as well. So there's a lot of mixing of water, lots of nutrients, which is, yeah, lots of food for, you know, all the marine creatures that live in here as well. And do those streams, do they bring particular species in with them which can then colonise the island here? Yeah, particularly a lot of southern species that aren't very common around the country. Um, things like the cup corals, um, yeah, and some of the other kind of branchy corals, things like pink sea fans. They're more kind of, yeah, southern species but kind of right on their northernmost limit here at Lundy. That's so exciting. And, and the island, it kind of faces a north-south orientation, doesn't it? Tell us a little bit about the different ecosystems we can find here underwater. Yeah, so, so on the east coast, you know, we have the Bristol Channel here. There's lots of kind of mud, sand and gravel, lots of wonderful sediments here, which shows, yeah, host to lots of kind of sediment specialists. We've got our sea mounts up in the northeast as well, which is just absolutely covered in corals. But we've also got lots of rocky reefs around, particularly the kind of more exposed west coast. Um, and then obviously in the more sheltered areas, we've got lots of algae, particularly things like kelp, which, you know, form these beautiful underwater forests. So, yeah, lots of different habitats. And these amazing underwater ecosystems that are forming here, what kind of species do they, do they support underwater? Ah, oh, well, everything from, you know, the tiniest little cushion stars right up to, you know, dolphins and minke whales um, and, of course, the Atlantic grey seals that we have here. Um, but also some of the summer visitors, things like seabirds too, you know, and all the fish that they feed on as well. It's just absolutely everything you could imagine. It's <laughs> incredible. So these amazing ecosystems that we're finding all the way around Lundy have a particularly special story of how they're protected, don't they? They do indeed. So yeah, Lundy's waters all the way around the island um, was actually the UK's first voluntary marine nature reserve back in the 70s, uh, which became an official a statutory marine nature reserve in 1986. Uh, and what that did was limit a lot of the types of fishing activity around the island to protect some of the really important um, marine species and habitats that we have here. And then a couple of other designations then followed. Um, so the island's kind of low to high water mark is a special area of conservation for Atlantic grey seals. Um, we also have the no tech zone, which is just next to us here. So no fishing whatsoever is allowed on these, this east coast because we've got lots of sensitive colonial marine invertebrates, things like branching sponges and our pink sea fans. Um, and then it's also a marine conservation zone as well um, to protect our spiny lobsters, our crawfish. So yes, illegal to land, those wonderful crustaceans around Lundy. That is fantastic. And with those protections in place, have you noticed an improvement in the biodiversity or the biomass of the species around the island? 
Well, indeed, I mean, all MPAs are important in that sense that they are protecting these habitats. Um, so, yeah, it has had the chance to you know, recover from potential destructive fishing methods in the past. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, you know, bumper seal numbers now around the islands, um, particularly in the no-tech zone. Within that first five years, we were seeing, you know, lobsters growing bigger and being more abundant, um, seen with edible crabs and things as well. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely had a massive positive effect. And, you know, our seabirds now are really prospering, particularly our ox, our puffins and our guillemots because there's just so much food out there for them now. So it's not just the things underwater that are benefiting from the marine protection, it's everything around the whole island. It is indeed. I mean, you know, it's a tie-off between the island itself and the marine. Uh, you know, the topography helps, you know, allow these sheltered areas for algae to prosper. But then also the birds that are breeding here, the seabirds, you know, they have these sheltered areas to find fish and to find food to feed their chicks as well. And you take people snorkelling here in the marine protected areas, don't you? What kind of uh, insight does that give people into these waters? Well, some people just don't believe what's actually under the water until you actually take them there. I mean, it's good teaching them, showing them pictures and aids, but actually seeing it, you know, firsthand is just, yeah, it's just awe-inspiring for some folk. So do you think that we need to be putting more protection into other areas of the UK like this? A hundred percent, yeah. Lundy is the kind of shining example of how marine protected areas really should be and how we should be looking after um, our marine habitats and it really should be kind of rolled out elsewhere in the UK. Yeah, we need more protected areas uh, around the country. You know, they protect a lot of the habitats around here, they, you know, provide important breeding areas for key species as well, um, but also for the education as well. So people come to Lundy and learn about the marine protected area and then hopefully that will inspire them to look after their little piece of ocean on their doorstep and, and actually the ocean and all the waters around the whole world as a whole. It might be April, but after chatting to Dean, I can't miss out on the chance to get in the water and see for myself what's down there. Lundy is a really special place and a shining example of how our seas and the ecosystems connected to them can thrive if given the proper protection. I feel so grateful to have finally had the opportunity to come and explore Lundy and I really hope that marine protection like this is rolled out to other places around the UK.